This show is brought to you by IndieWrestling.us. Check out IWC, RWA, and more. Click the Fight TV link on WrestlingMayhemShow.com to support this show and watch pro wrestling, MMA, boxing, and so much more. And listeners like you, support this show at Patreon.com slash WrestlingMayhemShow. Hey guys, it is the Indie Mayhem Show. I'm Mike Sorg at Sorgatron in the Mayhem Studios here in Pittsburgh, PA. And we're here for the Indie Mayhem Show talking indie wrestling with indie wrestlers and people who work around indie wrestling. Myself, a video professional here in the Pittsburgh area with the IWC, the RWA, and working with IndieWrestling.us. You can check out everything at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. You can uh, head over there and sign up for this podcast and so many more. And of course, the Indie Mayhem Show is available on iTunes, Stitcher, Spreaker, iHeartRadio, and video versions on the Wrestling Mayhem Show YouTube and Facebook page. And stick around on that Facebook page because you never know when we're going to get online and do a live podcast there's about four or five of you guys out there joining us on a random thursday night here uh to hear more of our stories from scotty san diego <laughs> we're just talking we about just butching your about name we, we just talked we about just this. talked about it. now i got that scotty san diego from from the crawfish oh, festival I, I put it in your head so you did you, you 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 sabotaged me on this thing of, of, of course scotty san- I, I sabotaged myself because now it's now everybody's gonna think i'm scotty san diego <laughs> Right. Scotty but, Santiago here on the indie on indie mayhem wrestling show podcast extravaganza. Uh, am I missing anything? No, else? no, no. We usually don't give ourselves that much credit. Um, first back to back, I think that we've ever done because we that, we got cool. we got so deep into the Mexico story, which wasn't even the point of the Mexico story. But there, you had so much that happened down there that that's well what we did was we set the table we, we did. set the table and now we're gonna we're gonna deliver the main course <laughs> which is the whole the whole point which <laughs> is actually way shorter than setting the table like setting the table took so long the main course is gonna be like five minutes exactly exactly um so so this will be a normal length podcast for us uh so so for um of course, uh, you're down there in the Texas area. We talked about last week. You did a kind of tour in in Mexico. Can you give them the real quick bullet points on your experiences in Mexico before we kind of proceed with the rest of the story? Sure, sure. Um, I went on a tour with DTU. Um, a bunch of wackiness happened. I got really sick and lost a bunch of weight and uh, wrestled a bunch and saw a UFO. Wrestled at a wedding and. Uh, bunch of other stuff uh wrestled with explosive diarrhea both in the ring and out and um saw a bunch of mexico like all over the place the only part of mexico that i didn't see that i really wanted to see was the pyramids that was like my one thing that i was like i'm going to central mexico i gotta see the pyramids i didn't get to see any pyramids so uh that was the biggest disappointment of the entire time i was down there not losing weight not vomiting and shitting water out of my ass uh it was it was not getting to see the pyramids because i was like man you know like if you're gonna go to central mexico like that's that's the attraction there right so right or at least it was uh so you got it you you got out of mexico you you were done with it you, you got back home I uh, I mean this was i mean this was kind of your journeyman moment to go and tour in mexico right you know what how 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 did you get back into uh i guess the american swing of things on the indies uh well it was weird um i was uh before i went down to mexico i was working with inspire pro who's a company based out of austin one of the one of the companies that i was working for i was working for a few other ones but um that was the one that i first approached when i came back and i was like Hey, you know, I want to come back and, you know, I'd like to come back for y'all and this, this and that. And we were talking about it and, uh, that's maybe where we can, we can start the story off, I guess, is with, uh, with all that. So, um, but I got to set this. Well, first off, you said this is a normal like podcast. How long, how long are we talking? Here? So I don't want to be like, oh yeah, I'll just, I aim for, short version I aim for 20 go. minutes, but if we go like half an Ooh. hour, that's okay. Okay. Uh, okay. Well, long story short, I'll give you the abridged version on this one. I came back and mentally, physically, I was kind of just fucked up. Like, uh, 
you know, took that tour did take a lot out of me, um, especially physically. Like I wasn't eating really at all towards the end. Uh, somebody gave me some chicken and I saved the bones and then I like broke them and like sucked out the marrow. Like that's how bad it was. Wow. Uh, um, it was, it was like survivor man type kind of shit. So it was pretty rough, but, uh, I came back and it was probably like the closest I've come to like wanting to quit wrestling, you know, like I was just like, why the fuck am I doing this? This is so stupid. Um, you know, like it was, it was just a really like toxic mentality that I had, but I was like, uh, I lucked out, um, Masada opened a school here in San Antonio, like pretty much right at the time that I came back. And so I was talking to him and I was just like, Hey, you know, I'd love to come and train. And he was like, yeah, by all means, uh, come out. And so I started doing that and I was like, well, you know, I'll, I'll keep training and then maybe I'll give Inspire Pro a shot and, you know, try and give this wrestling thing one last one last go before I, you know, say I'm not going to wrestle anymore. So I was training and I was talking to Inspire and I was like, you know, yeah, I'd love to come back. Um, and they were like, OK, yeah, we'll bring you in such and such a month, I think. So I come back in January and I think they were like, yeah, we're going to bring you back in February. And I was like, all right, cool. And then they hit me up and they were like, ah, oh, we're going to have to move it to March. And I was like, okay, cool. That's no problem. Like I was still gaining my weight back. I lost about 20 pounds while I was down there. So I was like, eh, no problem. You know, I'm getting into shape and getting my mind right and stuff like that. Uh, so March comes and they're just, or February comes, whatever month was the month that I said. And they were like, ah, oh, we got to push it back another month. They wound up pushing it back like two or three months. And uh, then finally I come back at Inspire um, but that, so they were like, all right, we're going to put you in this trio with these two other guys, uh, Houston Carson and Barrett Brown, who Barrett Brown's like blown up right now and doing a lot of really cool things. Uh, Carson actually just retired recently. Uh, he had a heart defect that had gone undiagnosed until relatively recently that he just found out about. But, um, so they were like, yeah, we're going to put you in a team with them. And I was like, okay, cool. And then the next month, Carson, I want to say he blew his knee out. He did something to his knee, messed his knee up. And uh, so we were kind of just like dead in the water right there. Um, man, I'm trying to, I'm leaving out so much, but long, long story short, it didn't work out at Inspire for me. Uh, we're still on good ish terms, I guess. Like, uh, I haven't really talked to any of their management lately or anything like that, but. Um, it was kind of just like, ah, this isn't working out, but, um, it kind of morphed into another thing because then I started going back to the other company that I was working for when I left, which is Anarchy Championship Wrestling. That's based out of uh, Austin. I don't know if you're familiar with them or not. Are you? Oh yes. Uh, I, well, when, when Eamon from Inspire first was joining us on the show, I think that was the first one he was getting into. So that's right. That's right. Yeah. He was, he was out at a couple of those shows. That's right. Mm -hmm. But, um, so, you know, both of those companies were sort of like where I got my start when I first, first, first started out wrestling, more so ACW. Um, and uh, ACW and Inspire were both running at this music festival called Fun 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 Fest, which is based out of Austin. It doesn't exist anymore. Now it's Sound on Sound Fest, uh, if that's not confusing enough. But um, so I show up and I was originally supposed to just wrestle for Inspire, but I ran into all the... ACW people, Darren Childs, Donnie Davis, um, you know, a bunch of the other ACW office guys. And they were just like, well, hey, you know, like, come back here. You can wrestle with your former tag team partner, Steve Orino, who's, uh, you know, pretty well-known-ish Texas guy, I'm sure, for anybody that follows Texas wrestling. Hold on, I got a hair yep. on my screen. I'm just going to poke at that really <laughs> quick. And, uh, and that's sorry, why you do really the video. And, and I think Steve Orino we have had on this show as well. Yeah, he's a really good guy. I'm actually going to be teaming up with him later this month at ACW, weirdly enough. Uh, we're having a little Scotty and Steve reunion tour. So, um, But you know, they were just like, yeah, we'll team you back up with him for this festival. And I was like, ah, it sounds like fun. Maybe it'll just be a one-off thing. Um, and so I was kind of just floating around a little bit. Like I was kind of burnt out on Inspire because of a lot of different reasons. Um, and I was kind of like, thinking about coming back to ACW, but, uh, and this is a part that I didn't even talk to you about last week was, uh, getting to go to Puerto Rico. So this kind of just like fell into my lap. 
Um, so I was sort of just kicking around San Antonio, like I said. I had started working for this company, TWE, which is run by Rudy Boy Gonzalez, who uh, he, you know, if you don't know who he is, he's the guy that trained Daniel, Brian, Brian Danielson, uh, Brian Kendrick, uh, Lance Cade. Is that uh, is that with uh, Shawn Michaels School at the time? Uh, well, Shawn Michaels Wrestling Academy closed down a long time ago. Like that's something that it's so weird. Like I still see people like, oh yeah, Shawn Michaels has a school in San Antonio, and it's like, nah, Shawn Michaels hasn't had a school but, in San Antonio. But they like, they came through the with this trainer at the Shawn Michaels Academy. I mean, yes, right? he okay. was he was one of the trainers at Shawn Michaels. School, okay. Yes. So, so really good trainer, like because uh, I know they they were doing some stuff with talking about like there was an early match and they talked about how they're from Chan Michael School and stuff and I don't know I don't know if they bring up the actual trainers or anything like that so I just want to clarify so people don't think we're getting history wrong. <laughs> no, no, so, no. Well, I would hope I wouldn't be getting my history wrong. Right. But little in fact, so Shawn Michaels obviously was the head trainer, but it yeah. was Rudy Boy and uh, this other guy who's a little bit lesser well known, but who doesn't get anywhere near enough credit. His name's Ken Johnson. Uh, who's been around since like, you know, uh, world class days, world class championship wrestling in Texas. That was the Von Erics and stuff for people that aren't up to up to snuff on their Texas wrestling history. And, uh, you know, he's been around forever. And he was one of the other guys that was like helping train people there. But, um, anyways, so Rudy Boy, um, you know, I sort of talked to him a little bit about, you know, coming back and just mentally and whatever trying to get get back into the groove and stuff like that and he was just like well um wwc which is the company that's based out of puerto rico and they're like you know the big carlos colon carlito like all those guys you know that's the company that they're from Mm -hmm. he was like they're going to be filming something here and if you want to be an extra or whatever you can just come and i was like okay cool that sounds that sounds cool uh, so I show up and, um, you know, we're doing our thing and it's taking forever. And meanwhile, I had like a day job at the time that I had to be at in the next couple hours. And I was like looking at the clock, waiting for WWC's people to get there. And I'm just like, Oh man, this is, I'm going to get fired for this thing that might not even happen. And, um, sure enough, probably like an hour before, I was supposed to be in at work. Uh, They show up, but the part that they didn't tell any of us was like Alberto Del Rio was going to be there. So he shows up and I was just like, what What is going on? Like I was so confused and they were like, oh yeah, he's going to be like filming this thing and wound up like I got this big, you know, part in it basically of, you know, the segment or whatever that they were filming went over well and you know i didn't think anything of it for a while and then like a month later they were like hey we want to bring you in to puerto rico to wrestle uh this guy ray gonzalez jr who was the son of basically like the the promoter i guess uh at the time of wwc so they were like yeah we want to bring you in to wrestle this guy and i was like to Puerto Rico and they were like, yeah. So they, you know, got my plane ticket, flew me down there and, uh, yeah, I got to be on the Island in Puerto Rico and it was so beautiful. Like, oh man, it was just, well, hold on. You look like you got to say, say I'm, I'm not clear on what the segment was that you guys were filming for. Oh, the segment, it was basically like, I'm trying to think of how to even explain it. Um, so Ray Gonzalez jr. So for, for people who aren't, big followers of Puerto Rican wrestling. It has a very long history and, you know, like I was actually like really into Puerto Rican wrestling, watching it and stuff like that. Uh, when I first started out, like Carlos Colon, Hercules Ayala, like all those guys, uh, it was just great, great stuff that they were doing down there in like the seventies, the eighties. Um, and so this guy, he's the son of a guy who was really big in the 90s, Rick Gonzalez, who was supposed to be signed with WWF at the time. But um, he basically like turned a contract with them down so that he could stay working in Puerto Rico, mm-hmm. which I don't really understand. Don't tell him I said that. Um, I would have I taken the contract. But he had such love for Puerto Rico, apparently, that he was just like, now I'm going to try and build up WWC. But uh, anyways, um, his son was coming to Rudy Boy's school to train, but 
his dad was having issues with Del Rio, and I dropped the dime on him, called uh, called my buddy Del Rio, who I have the phone number of, and you know he showed up and stretched him out a little bit. So, um, so yeah, so that wound up happening, and then um, you know they got in touch with me about a month later, and this was while I was still juggling around like ah, ACW, Inspire, should I even still be wrestling at all? Mm-hmm. Eh, eh, eh. Mm-hmm. Um, and I got that and it was just like such a great experience. Um, I met Mr. 450 who, uh, mm-hmm. just like took such good care of me, like, cause that's where he's from. And I mean, it was, uh, when I went down there, it was, um, like the three Kings celebration, which is like a big holiday down there and a big holiday in like Latin America and stuff like that. So like we went to like this huge, you know, basically like outdoor party and stuff like that. I mean, just like they shut down the whole city that we went to basically for this. Um, really, really cool. Um, just, you know, uh, we were also hanging out with, uh, Hijo de los Caras. He's, uh, Del Rio's brother, uh, who's also like super cool guy. And, uh, I think he just recently popped up in, I don't want to say TNA cause it's not TNA anymore. It's G GWF. I think we can still say Impact Wrestling, Impact. technically. So We can say Impact, yeah. The, the, that one. So he just showed up there, or, which is or, awesome. I know we kind of rolled it into TNGFW, uh, TNFW. People I, watching so, yeah. know what we're talking yeah, about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The one with Jeff Jarrett. We don't know what it's going to be called next week, so we'll just go with Impact. Hey, there you go. Good enough. So he just popped up on Impact. But anyways, um, so I went down there. And it was just like such a positive experience from beginning to end. Um, just really, really great experience. And it sort of like rekindled uh, my love of wrestling and my love of me being in wrestling, I guess I should say. So I was like, all right, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give this a shot. So um, got in touch with ACW and I was like, yeah, you know, like I'm, I'm feeling it now. My mind's where it needs to be. Um, came back and immediately won their U30 title which is their under 30 title, Mm -hmm. which I'm getting very close now to not being eligible for. (laughs) Uh, I'm, I'm pushing, I'm 29 right now. So, uh, thinking about that, I'm just like, Oh man, if I ever want to win that title, I've only got until March basically to do it. But, um, yeah, so I did that and then that's kind of like, uh, hit the ground running basically. But I mean, it was a slow start. Um, even after that, where, you know, I was just like, man, you know, like I'm wanting to pursue this wrestling stuff, but I was still, you know, like I had that seed of doubt in my mind, you know, because like I had gone on this Mexico thing and basically I didn't have the intention of coming back to America. When I went down to Mexico, I was like, I'm going to Mexico. I'm going to stay in Mexico for the foreseeable future. Mm -hmm. Um, and it wound up not working out. Like, uh, I told you I lost my wallet, like immediately getting there. Right. Like, still, I wasn't even in Mexico. I was in Houston, lost my wallet in Houston. So, um, you know, it just was really like, I failed, but I failed like so spectacularly or so much more than I thought I was going to. Um, cause it never, it never like, crossed my mind of like, Oh, you're going down to Mexico. This might maybe not work out for you. (laughs) You know, what are you going to do if it doesn't work out? That's the other thing though, is when you went to Mexico and and I presume Puerto Rico as well, like Mm -hmm. I, I, from our discussion last week, it sounded like you had the understanding that you guys were going to be kind of taken care of for this thing and put up and, and, you know, as part of the tour and everything. And that just, well, that's the difference. Puerto Rico, I actually was taken care of. Puerto Rico took very care of me. I love Puerto Rico. Um, I want to go back there. Also, any, any, also, um, Puerto Rico is not technically a foreign country, so it's not as tech- risky-ish, I guess, right? Uh, <laughs> it's, it's, it's risky in its own way. It's yeah. risky in its own way. So Mexico, I'd honestly say, like, Mexico, especially, like, central Mexico, is probably safer. Like, uh, Puerto Rico, there's kind of a lot of, like, crime, but it's mm. not, like, Mexico crime, like, in Mexico, like more of the the areas where there's a lot of crime is in the north, um, so like border towns and stuff like that. Especially right. as you move like further and further west, um, it gets gets pretty uh, pretty uh, pretty hairy out there. So, but Puerto Rico, it's like it's fine for the most part. But there's definitely like certain neighborhoods in Puerto Rico that you do not want to go into. Um, 
but yeah, I mean, like I have positive experiences in both, but, uh, yeah, definitely like, you know, with the Mexico one, I went all in I was just like, I sold pretty much everything I had. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I didn't really have like a plan B of if it didn't work out or anything. Cause right. you know, from the wrestler mindset, it's just like, Oh, well I'll just move somewhere else and start getting bookings and it'll all work out, you know, but, uh, didn't wind up being the case in Mexico. So it's really interesting. And I don't know if this is a thing because of your kind of geographically where you're at and working, um, because I know, you know, guys here in Western PA, West Virginia, you know, like, uh, you know, we've talked to DJ Z obviously does a lot of Mexico, uh, facade, Jason Gorey, and they'll do a lot of, uh, some of them go to Mexico. Some of them have had, uh, recently, uh, Russia and, and, uh, what was it? Uh, Singapore, I think, uh, 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 uh travels over the last couple of years. Uh, yeah. You know, in you know, you have Mexico so close. You you have you know, I guess the Latin American connection with Puerto Rico. Is that something that do you find that wrestlers down there, indie wrestlers, have more chance for that opportunity because of the where you're at? In Texas, um, well, I think any wrestler has the opportunity for that. They just have to you know search for it and figure it out. You know, like for mm-hmm. me, um, I kind of lucked out. In a, in a sense, because I knew Lowrider, I lucked out and I didn't luck out because I knew Lowrider. <laughs> As we, uh, we, a, described at, we described at length the luck and misfortune of knowing Lowrider in the last episode. <laughs> we, me and my friends, we actually have a, we have a saying now, and it's uh, Lowrider giveth and Lowrider taketh away. So, <laughs> you know, he'll, he'll be like, bro, I've got a booking for you on like such and such a date. And I'm just like, okay, great. And then like, Two days before, he's like, oh, bro, that booking fell through. And I'm just like, oh, okay, thanks. Thanks, Low Rider. <laughs> but, um, you know, I mean, it wound up getting me to Mexico. So, I mean, like, as much as I as much as much I shit on him, and sometimes, you know, justifiably so, he did, he did help me out. And, I mean, we are still good friends. I'm actually going to be seeing him uh, tomorrow night, actually, for Heavy Metal Wrestling. He's nice. going to be showing up there. So um, it's going to be going to be fun getting to catch up with him. Uh the last time I saw him was a couple weeks ago at a bus stop here in San Antonio. He was <laughs> he was passing through and he was just like, "Bro, can you get me like some like a hamburger or something?" And I was just like, "Yeah, man, I got you." So like I I picked him up a burger or something. We just caught up really fast. This but, is it, it, uh, and I love one thing I love is just these you know from from shows I've worked up here or traveled to or anything and, and these stories just the very interesting characters. Like not just Lowrider. not the, the low rider is definitely a character. Yeah, so. yeah, and not not the people as they are in the ring, but they're like the people like this at a bus stop, you know. <laughs> so yeah, well, I mean, hey, that is wrestling. I mean, Absolutely. so much wrestling is just getting on a Greyhound bus sometimes and mm-hmm. being like, I'm gonna drive. Well, not drive, but I'm gonna sit in this bus, and eventually I'll be in another state or whatever. So. um you know, that's how I came back to America. I took a Greyhound from Matamoros back up to San Antonio. So Greyhound systems are great for pro wrestlers. <laughs> um, you know, I, personally, I'm more of a fan of mega buses, though. Mega bus in, in oh, Texas yeah. is, like, so much nicer. They've that, got Wi-Fi. doesn't always work, but, you know, it's it's the thought that counts. That's my, so. that's my go-to Pittsburgh to New York trips right there. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, yeah, that was... That was me getting from San Antonio to Austin when I first got started out. Um, that was just, oh man, I'm booked in Austin. I'm gonna get on the mega bus, and that was that was back when you could actually get a mega bus ticket for a dollar. Yeah, you know. Yeah. So nowadays it's a, a little bit more, but we'll have to reach out for them for some sponsorship, especially for this show with you guys. Um, I would, love, I would love that sponsor <laughs> me, please, mega bus. Let's get on that. That's right. Um, so. So from that, so you've had some great opportunities here, you know, for better and worse. Uh, but you, you said that, you know, something that happened in Mexico, and that's one thing we discussed briefly last week. Uh, the the, so something, something that happened in Mexico and kind of crept up on you uh, a, a little bit ago here recently. Can, can you explain the situation? What, what happened in Mexico and how did that reconnect uh, here, here recently? Well, so we talked about, so this was before I went for that tour. Mm-hmm. Um, and this was the first time I'd lost my hair. Um, and, and, well, and, and rolling back, he's lost his hair several times in Mexico 
over the course of his travels. So we, we, we got into that. Yeah. Um, so we'll hold on. So let me, let me fast forward a little bit, then I'll rewind. Okay. And then I'll fast forward even more to, to the actual point. We're so going this, to Tarantino the, this shit. Yeah. Well, this is, this is the main course right here. This is what we were talking about. So I gotta, I gotta set out the hors d'oeuvres. <laughs> I'm going to serve dessert a little bit before the main course, and then we're going to get to the main course. I promise. We'll get there. Um, so, um, so yeah. So, recently, my friend uh, just started a company, Heavy Metal Wrestling, here in San Antonio, which uh, is such a cool concept. Like, I'm you know, so in love with the concept. It's just rock and wrestling together. I mean, it's just such a great idea. It's a shock that no one's ever done it before. <laughs> but... Um, <laughs> You know, basically, it's like live music uh, will always have bands playing out, you know, the talent as they're making their way to the ring and stuff like that. And they'll do uh, the band that we're using, that we used on the first show, and the band that is going to be at the show tomorrow is going to be this band Party Robot. And they do, like, different covers of songs and stuff like that. So, I mean, it'll be cool, cool metal songs or punk songs or whatever. You know, you'll know it when you hear it, and then you know the wrestler comes out and they wrestle. So it's a it's a cool thing, cool concept. And um, so we were running out of this company, or well, no, out of this venue. And um, so even before the first show, we um, my friend sends me this picture from the venue, and it's this like hand painted sign, and it's like you know, has a list of like, I guess, house rules there. And it's, you know, no racism, no homophobia, no xenophobia, no this, no that, no transphobia. Uh, the one that stood out to us that we kind of chuckled at was no fat phobia. Um, because I don't, I didn't know that was a thing. Like people are afraid of fat people. Oh, okay. I, I didn't know it existed. I didn't know it existed, but it's, it's very strange because San Antonio is like one of the fattest cities in the country. So I don't, I feel like we're pretty, pretty tolerant of fat people here, mm-hmm. but, um, anyhow, so, you know, we saw that and we were just like, Hmm, so, you know, are they going to be okay with professional wrestling? Because I mean, not like pro wrestling is, you know, necessarily transphobic or racist or whatever. I mean, sometimes it's racist, but as, as we're about to talk about setting, setting the stage, even though it wasn't racist, just keep watching. It'll make sense. Um, so we were just like, are they going to be okay with pro wrestling? And, you know, my friend checked with the people that own the venue and they were like, oh yeah, you know, whatever. Just, uh, you know, nothing, nothing too crazy. And we were like, all right, cool. And so, um, yeah, so we had the first show, we had the second show, and now I'm going to rewind a little bit and talk about what we were talking about last week. So, uh, scroll back three years, myself, Dylan Dunbar, uh, this other guy from San Antonio, Ruben Steele, good buddy of mine, uh, training partner of mine, actually. I train with him all the time now. And um, so we went down to Matamoros, Mexico. This was the first time I lost my hair for Saturday. And then Sunday, we had set up a show in Reynosa, Mexico that we were going to wrestle at. And so a couple weeks before this show happens, we get this flyer for the show and it's, you know, Dylan Dunbar, Scotty Santiago, Ruben Steele, the border patrol. And I look at it and I'm just like, oh, okay, I guess we're the border patrol, you know? And like, I checked with Dunbar. I was like, did you tell him that we were border patrol? And he was like, no man, they just put that on there. And I was like, Oh, okay, cool. You know, I, I see where this is going. You know, they're going to want us to act like border patrol guys. So we show up and sure enough, the promoter, you know, the, the Mexican national promoter, I might add, born and raised in Mexico, uh, hands us our hands us our Border Patrol shirt, hands us our Border Patrol hat. Uh, I didn't realize this is how you join the Border Patrol, but apparently <laughs> apparently it is. And, uh, you know, gave us uh, some tortillas and some, some cactus to throw at people and some silly string to spray people with. Wait, 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 wait. Cactus? Cactus, yeah. Like actual pieces of cactus. Well, not with the spikes in it. I okay, mean, okay, thank you, thank you. Yeah, 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 yeah. You can eat cactus; it's it's edible. Sure. Certain cactuses are not all of them. Some of them will make you see stuff. So it's don't just worry like, about those. It's ones. just like berries. You can't. You gotta pick the right ones. It, there you go. There you go. So, um, yeah, but definitely not like cactuses with spikes in it. That would have been that would have been a little too much. 
But, you know, so we go out there and, I mean, of course we throw tortillas at people and, of course, we throw cactus at people and, of course, we shoot silly string at people. Uh, and, of course, we got our asses kicked by uh, the people that we were wrestling, you know. Um, and so we think nothing of it. We had a blast. Uh, this was the show I was talking to you about last week. So, yeah, like, we got yeah. the, the picture with uh, Super Mario. He was on the show. Um, he, uh, he asked us for a photo op. He was like, can we do one where y'all are like arresting me and taking me to jail? And we were like, yeah, sure. And he was like, yeah, cause I'm super Mario. So I like jump over the wall, you know? So, I mean, he had his whole <laughs> internal logic going with it. And I was like, okay, I could, I could see like a Mexican super Mario, even though he's supposed to be Italian trying to sneak across the border and stuff like that. And we stopped him. I can get that. Uh, <laughs> Kung Fu Panda one and two were both on the show. Also, um, there was a giant dog. Uh, called Cookies Doberman, and uh, you know, pretty basically like any unlicensed cartoon character that you could think of was also on this show. Uh, there might have been a few Ninja Turtles, I don't really remember. Um, oh, I've seen some YouTube videos of that. Yeah, they're 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 out there. So yeah. well, there's like two there's two separate teams of Ninja Turtles in Mexico, so it's not like one team of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. They got to have two, so. Uh, and they faced each other. It was actually a really good match. I saw a video of it. But anyways, before we start going off on a tangent of uh, cartoon character slash luchadors, um, so, you know, we think nothing of it. This is three years ago. Totally different political climate. Obama <laughs> was in office. Um, you know, it was it was a simpler time. It, it was, was a much simpler time in American politics. <laughs> and, and, uh, and pro wrestling. Last- and pro wrestling. Yeah, yeah, it was a simpler time in pro wrestling. Back when back when men were men and women were women and uh, back things when, like back when men were men and women were divas apparently. Well, yeah, well, yeah, that's I mean, true. technically, that before, I mean on paper. Well, that was before the divas revolution yeah, which right. made them women. That's right. Yeah, so that's your wrestling history right there. There you go. So, um so anyways, we're starting heavy metal. Everything's going great. Um, we're getting, you know, great feedback from fans. We're getting great feedback from, you know, just sort of the local wrestling community and stuff in South Texas and Texas as a whole, really. Like, I mean, um, heel face wrestling, which is, uh, they do a lot of podcasts and stuff like that and all kinds of different stuff. Like they really liked our stuff and, you know, we're advertising for us. We were having a lot of like social media love all over on Twitter and stuff like that, which if anybody watching this wants to check it out, they're on Twitter, just search for him, heavy metal wrestling. Um, everything was going great. And then we got a little, uh, we got a little wrench in the plans. Uh, the owner of this venue hits up my friend and he's like, Oh, y'all are running on such and such a date. Oh, we accidentally double booked y'all. We brought in this other band and we were like, what? Well, we had agreed to the venue first, so you're going to cancel on them, right? And they were kind of hoeing and humming, but then eventually they canceled on them, or they said they canceled on them. Uh, and then about a week later, they were just like, all right, we're canceling on you guys. And we were like, why? What had happened was my friend Dylan, who I had gone down there with, he was Border Patrol agent number two, basically. I was number one, obviously. Um, and I guess Ruben was number three. No, Ruben was number two. Dunbar was number three. Um, so it had been the three-year anniversary of that thing. And so we like posted the picture of us in our, you know, border patrol gear and stuff like that. And so this guy, this owner of this venue sends this like super long winded, like Tumblr post text to my friend. And it's just like, you know, it's come to our attention that you guys are involved in like white supremacist activity. And oh, geez, this wait, what? white supremacist activity and um you know you're engaged in white supremacy and you know all this racist stuff and blah 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 and you're also trump supporters because i i did when when so when this post gets reshared you know the guys that we wrestled were like oh we want to wrestle you again and i was you know i comment in there i was like yeah we'll wrestle you for trump you know and um just stuff like that and i think uh, because guys, there's a guy from pittsburgh doing that in well there's, you know. there's a lot of guys doing that i mean yeah, trump, yeah. trump is a uh, trump is trump you know yeah, i mean it, it, but that's that's the issue at hand is you know that name sort of 
rubs people the wrong way a little bit, certain people. So, and the people that own this venue just happen to be a uh, very fervent, um, very militant anti-fascist, which kind of is just like an oxymoron. Like, how is that? Right. How can you be a militant right. anti-fascist? Right. Doesn't defeat the purpose. I don't know. Um, but anyways, so they're just like, well, we've already thrown all your chairs out of the venue. And, <laughs> like, this and, that. and you know, if, if you want them, you better come get them before like somebody just grabs them off the street. And so my friend Dylan sends me all this and he's just like, I'm at work right now, but as soon as I get out, I'm going over there. And this was like maybe 11, 1130 at night. And I was just like, all right, I'm putting my clothes on and I'm going there. Cause I was like, just getting ready for bed. And then I see all this. And so we show up and, you know, we have, have some words with the venue owner and stuff like that. And let him know that we didn't really, uh, didn't really appreciate being called white supremacists. Um, Ruben Steele wasn't there, but I'm sure I, I told him about it and he laughed cause he's like the most Mexican person I know. And it's just like, yeah, bro, you're, you're a self-hating Mexican. You, you hate yourself <laughs> somehow. Um, but uh, just, you know, very, very strange, very strange people. Like I thought people like that were memes. Like you, re you remember that meme a while ago that was like um, the girl talking to the barber and she's like, I want a haircut that people know that I'm offended by everything. And it was like the picture of the girl with the purple hair. And I don't, I don't know. That was a meme a while ago. Was, but my point is, is I, I thought that that was just like a joke. Like people yeah. would get offended over everything. Like I didn't know that was a real thing. Yeah. But apparently those people exist. Well, so. and, and, and I don't know if, you know, obviously the, when in the Mexicans in Mexico, like, wow, you guys were obviously heels, you know, we're kind well, of, I mean, unless you were American. Okay, uh, yeah, I guess. But, but we're like really strong on like border policy. Right. Then yeah, we were the faces. Right. Absolutely. So, so I mean, the promoters, the Mar Sup Mexican Super Mario were like in on the joke and everything. Again, a different context. Like is, you know, I, I imagine, you know, again, I know we're kind of just heading down another thing. Like, is that climate where this venue is? kind of really heated around that as well? Well, or this no. is just these people went that direction. Well, hmm. You know, I definitely it definitely wasn't heated because I mean, it wasn't like as soon as we came out, these Mexican national fans stood up in disgust and were just like border patrol agents in our wrestling show. I don't want to, I don't want to do this. <laughs> no, they were just like, Oh, these guys are border patrol agents. They're assholes. Boo, boo, asshole. I hate you. You know, they, the fans understood that, you know, we weren't really border patrol agents. At least I'm pretty sure they did. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. just to clarify, I've never now or have ever worked as a border patrol agent, uh, in my life. I'd probably be well, way better off financially if I had, um, <laughs> You know, but, um, yeah, that being said, like, you know, it wasn't just, we didn't get any negative feedback of just oh, how dare these people, you know, support border policy or something, you know, right, cause it wasn't right. at, at the time. And even still to this day, like, I don't really have a very strong opinion on, you know, border security. I mean, I guess I'm for it, I guess, but you know, I, I don't think securing a border is inherently racist. I'll say that. Okay. So, okay. Okay. I don't, I don't think that's too, uh, too outrageous of a thing to say, but, um, but either way, I, it's one of those, no, it's definitely, it was a leap to get where they went from there to like kind of labeling you as that. And, you know, this is a character thing and it wasn't even a thing that you, you know, it, it, it's interesting how those kind of creep up. And well, that was probably one of those, like, uh, Facebook, hey, on this day, remember when you did this kind of thing, right? That's exactly what it was. That's mm -hmm. exactly what it was. Mm -hmm. And it was three years ago. And we told them about that, too, you know, like when we were there talking to them about it because we were just like, you're getting upset at – or my friend was like, well, you're getting upset at a Facebook post. And I chime in and I'm like, a Facebook post from three years ago, by the way. So, I mean, like we were saying when we were setting the stage for this, I mean, it was a different political time. Um Issues like border patrol or border security weren't as contentious, I don't think, yeah. because of who was in office at the time. I mean, you know, it wasn't like Obama just opened the borders and, you know, flooded people in. Like, I mean, he was pro-border security, too. 
mm-hmm. uh, maybe a little bit less so than the guy who's currently in office, but uh, well, maybe with a different tone. Let's just say with a different tone. For yeah, sure. yeah. He wasn't. He wasn't saying let's build a giant wall between yeah, us. Yeah. And Mexico. He wasn't quite going that far. Um, yeah. Not that not as colorful of language for one thing. So, but but still, I like, and I think so. So this is a thing that happened, and and, and you're you're an interesting. Like I know if we have talked to people on here in the past that have worried about separating their wrestling life to their home uh, uh, professional, you know, shoot job life, right? Yes. Um, so you you know you have this interesting thing that happened that was your wrestling life affected your later wrestling life. Like, is there, you know, is there a lesson you've kind of clawed from this or is it just, Hey, you're going to run into some people that will have to deal with this. Well, and it's funny because I actually had this conversation with the venue owners, Mm -hmm. uh, after the first show, because like, and it's so funny, like, um, so after the first show, first show goes great. Um, the venue, the one good thing about the steaming shit pile that was this venue was it was BYOB. So -hmm. they didn't have any air conditioning. There was a gas leak at the second show. (laughs) Um, uh, it was just a small, like literally a hole in the wall. Uh, but it was BYOB. So, I mean, of course the first show I bring, you know, a case of beer with me. I'm not even a big drinker, but just for like the, you know, the novelty sake of like, I'm drinking at a wrestling show that I'm on. Um, after I wrestled, of course, um, you know, so, you know, I had a couple beers left over. Everybody else was gone, but the venue owners. So I was like kicking back, drinking beers with them. And I had a probably like a 30 or a 45 minute conversation about how I really like people hating me. Like, it's just such a, it gets kind of addictive after a while because it's just like, if you can get that emotion and just pull it out of people of just. I'm going to walk out of this curtain and within the next, you know, 18 to 20 to 30 to however many minutes, I'm going to make you just want me to die. You know, like Mm -hmm. I want you to hate me as much as you possibly can. Mm -hmm. Um, Eliciting that kind of emotion out of people is just like, it's such a weird, like narcotic rush, you know? So, um, you know, and I had this really long conversation with him about it, about how, you know, just I love that and I love sort of like instigating stuff like that. And I like poking the bear and pushing people's buttons. Um, and apparently it just completely went over their heads because, you know, cue to two or three months later and they're just like, yeah, guys, y'all went too far when you wore these Border Patrol shirts three years ago. So, um, you know, I mean, it was strange because it was like, to me, I don't feel like that's necessarily going too far in the context of pro wrestling. Right. You know, like if it was, there's worse stuff in pro wrestling. Well, there's worse stuff in the, in the world, you know, like border border patrol agents are a real thing. Like I've interacted with border patrol agents. I've interacted with Mexican border patrol agents. They exist. Um, I wouldn't go so far as to say that, if you're a border patrol agent, you're inherently a white supremacist. No. Um, I would say you're probably like an American supremacist, uh, because you believe in America, I guess, but you know, I wouldn't necessarily say like, okay, you're a border patrol agent. So you automatically think that white. It's it's a job. It's also a job. It's also just a law enforcement job. Yeah. I'm sure there's like plenty of them that are just like, whatever, I don't even believe in this border stuff, but I'm just earning a paycheck, you know? Right. Right. Uh, Um, so yeah, I mean, it was just, it was very strange because I mean, like my definition of white supremacy is you think white people are better than everybody else. Like that's what I thought the definition was not wearing a shirt or wearing a hat or wrestling at a wrestling show, you know, like it just, it didn't really didn't really strike me like that. But then again, maybe that's because of my white privilege and maybe my, you know, whatever, that's how they would explain it or whatever. Um, but then I've talked to people from all different ethnicities about this. Like I've told people this story and I've been like, do you think that's racist? Cause I mean like maybe, maybe that is the case. Maybe I've got the blinders on or something and, Pretty much everybody that I talk to is just like, nah, I don't, I don't really see that as being racist. Mm-hmm. Um, not inherently racist, yeah. you know. Yeah. Um, so I don't know, man. I mean, like, 
you know, it's one thing to get people to hate you in wrestling, but you want to get them to hate you to where they want to be compelled to see you get your ass kicked, not to where they hate you so much to where they're just like, this is disgusting. This is, you know, like just trash. I don't want to see it. You want them riled up, not offended. Mm, Okay. Sometimes offended. Yeah. Yeah. I, I want them. I want them a little bit offended. I like. I like offending people a little, a, just a little bit. All right. You know. All right. Um, enough. Uh, offended enough. Not too much. Yeah, not yeah. like full on. You know, Katie Vick. I, I don't know. I'm trying to think of other <laughs> other tasteless stuff. So much tasteless stuff has been done in wrestling. Yeah. Border Patrol stuff has been done in wrestling so much in South Texas. Maybe I'm just you know, a little bit biased too, because I live in South Texas and I've seen so many like border patrol agent slash wrestler guys that I didn't think it was such a big deal, but apparently it is. Right. And that's a very regional thing, right? Like we, I can't think of anything here because I've only been seeing indie wrestling for the last maybe 10 years in the Pittsburgh area, but well, you could do, you could do it border patrol agent for Canada on that way. And you could just have like a super militantly anti-Canadian hey, guy. Hey, we had the Mountie, right? Yeah, yeah, that was racist. That was <laughs> Wait, racist. was it? In Canadian centric. Yeah, okay, okay. How, how yeah, yeah, dare, yeah. How yeah. dare someone be a mounted police officer in the Canadian <laughs> police force? How dare they? And he was acting like he was better than you because he was Canadian. Mm-hmm. Well, more national, but yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, absolutely. So, yeah. um, man. I well, guess... it is pretty much only white people that live in Canada, right? So, for uh, the most part. M- m- uh, well. A lot of Asians in, in Toronto. I know that. So Also in British Columbia, right? Because it's like kind of close to the Pacific. So yeah. they emigrate. Okay. Well, yeah, well, 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 I thought that's the other. I, I don't know. I don't know my, my, my uh, geography of Canada very well. Well, that'll, that'll be the part three episode is where we just go over Canadian sociology. Okay. Uh, okay. But, uh, but yeah, so I don't know. It was just a weird situation. But – you know, there's always always a silver lining in these situations. So um, we wound up getting a much better venue. Uh, it's this club here in San Antonio. It's called the Corova, and it's way better known. Um, it's you know just air conditioned, which I love. You know, nothing worse than wrestling in like a small hole in the wall building that doesn't have any air conditioning in the middle of summer in San Antonio. Um, you know, and just so many like musical acts come through there and stuff like that. And, uh, we actually just got featured recently in a local newspaper and they were, it's like the trendy newspaper. Like there's the official newspaper (laughs) in San Antonio. And then there's like the cool hip underground newspaper. And, uh, we got featured in that today as a matter of fact. So that was pretty cool. Well, it's always good to hear, uh, what's going on, uh, halfway across the country here in, uh, in, in the wrestling world and, and I guess internationally as well. Uh, so, uh, you know, we kind of, we kind of talked about a little bit of what you kind of glommed from this a little bit. So, uh, thank you so much for sharing your interesting stories the last two weeks of this show. <laughs> yeah. I mean, they're, they're definitely something. So, I mean, I mean, there's a lot that I sort of glossed over and stuff like that. But right. I think, uh, I think the finer points were covered. So finer points of the last like three years since the last time we talked. Yeah. So. Um, that's great. And, and guys, let us know what you, Ooh, oh. I forgot, to, I forgot to mention about reality of wrestling. I'm wrestling for a uh, Booker T's. Oh, company. nice. That's going to be Saturday. And I'm, I'm not a uh, Scotty Santiago there. I'm the great Scott there. So, which is the greatest name in wrestling. I think like they pitched that to me and they were like, what do you think about being great Scott? And I was like, I love it. And I want it tattooed on my chest. So um, <laughs> that's awesome. Probably not actually going to do that. But anyways, if uh, any of your listeners happen to follow Reality of Wrestling, y'all can see me on there at some point whenever they uh, upload the videos and stuff like that. Awesome. I, I just saw um, an old friend of the show. Oh, I'm going to mess up her name. Hua Sung Young. Uh, oh, I'm man, messing yeah. that up. I know. But- but just give me a second because I know she, how to pronounce it. She was it. either way. She was just a high high Yang. Thank you. Um, uh, Eamon was taking care of that one, uh, I believe, on the interview. Uh, but uh, but I know she was just featured in Bleacher, Bleacher Report. I was just tweeting out today. So good to see a lot of attention going there, and that that's great working around Booker T. I'm sure. Um, ask him ask him about his uh, uh, night in Meadville. He he loves our or was was fascinated by our hills. 
get getting to that where night where um he was he did a night of superstars up here uh north of pittsburgh and uh, pretty pretty out in the middle of nowhere and uh, (laughs) i i got to chat with him uh uh, briefly about his drive he's a a really cool guy oh he's awesome knowledgeable yeah um yeah i mean and he's also running for mayor of houston in 2020 which like the coolest like I'm going to be, I'm actually, uh, so things have been going really well for me in reality of wrestling. I'm planning on moving to Houston in December Nice. and who knows, maybe I'll be, uh, working on his, uh, working on his campaign or something. Who knows? So, Hey, after seeing Rhino's campaign videos and, and his campaign jar, he had out here for hardcore house of hardcore. Um, that's, well, he, uh, won. he won, he won the election that he was in, wasn't he? Oh, did he? I didn't think he did. Oh, I thought he did. I could be. Well, I, mean, Maybe. I, I wouldn't think he'd be still on WWE if he did, but I could be wrong. Could be. He could have a light mm-hmm. schedule. You never know. Well, Maybe. thank you, Scotty Santiago. I said it right. Yes. Yes. You just said it right enough. Don't worry. Right, about en- it. You're, right you're, enough. You're Berg, I'm not going to judge you that much. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm going to yinzer it for you. Uh, where can people find you online? Online, uh, I just recently changed my Twitter handle, so it's Scotty tweets to you. And letter U, number two letter U, um, and I tweet to you there. I tweet to you particularly the last couple weeks. Um, you can find me on Instagram, Scotty2Selfie, which is also the number two. And then um, that's pretty much it. I don't really do a whole lot of social media. I've got Facebook, but um, you can find me on there. It's just Scotty Santiago. I don't have like a fan page or anything like that. Nothing crazy. No Snapchats. Um, I tried getting a Snapchat once, but I didn't understand it, so I don't have a Snapchat. I mean, I think I do. I didn't delete it, but it's if a- you find it, I don't ever post anything That's on That's okay. There. It's gotten creepier. Uh, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, check them out there. Thank you for having me. Thank you so much. Uh, uh, check them out, especially Reality of Wrestling. Again, uh, they're online. They're down there in the Houston area as well. If you're in the neck of the woods, go uh, swing by. I hear there's some really great shows. Look like it online at least. Uh, and, of course, if you want to uh, let us know, uh, anybody that you – any thoughts on this interview, any uh, questions for interviews upcoming that we may have announced at the time, um, or if you want to sl- let us know who you want us to check out and maybe interview or, or, or some indie wrestling we should check out or anything like that, we're always looking for new stuff. Uh, to experience out there. Uh, so please hit us up, good times at wrestlingmayhemshow.com or the hotline at 412 206 WMS0. Please support the show, patreon.com slash wrestling A lot of you guys out there, uh, thank you so much for uh, uh, contributing a buck or two uh, to the show. And if nothing else, please just share the show if you dig it. Get it out there. If you dig it, I had a Booker T moment there. Uh, sucka. Uh, oh, it, that's, that's John Cena's thing. I have to look at it. Oh, so, oh yeah, I have to look at the five. Yeah, look Not, at the five. I can't wave it around my face. That's no, what, no, that's no, no, no. You, you you hold it and you move your head a lot, right? Like you yeah. do this thing. Well, it's kind I'll, of. I'll, I'll I'll clue you in on something. So Booker T's other thing that I've really been liking. Mm-hmm. If uh, somebody really fucks up, he like completely just kicks him out of the locker room. So he'll come to the back, and I actually I got to see this once. It was really cool because like I had only just heard <laughs> about it, and then it happened. Um, so. This guy, like, really fucked up in his match. Like, really, really bad. And um, so, you know, after the match, he comes to the back. And Booker T just storms in. He's just fuming, like, pissed off. And, I mean, everybody that had been there for a while already knew what was going on. I, like, sort of, I thought I knew what was going on. And then it turned into what I thought. And so his kind of unofficial catchphrase uh, for the reality of wrestling locker room is, Get your shit and get the fuck out of here. You know, so he'll just kick people, like, right out of the locker room wow. if they fuck, like, really, really bad. So I, And I got to think, a, a mad Booker T has got to be really scary coming at you. Well, I mean, he's really entertaining if he's not coming at you. Yes. If he's coming at somebody else, it's like, holy shit, grab the popcorn. Like, this is going to be <laughs> great. <laughs> like, this is, this is going to make my month, you know, but... Uh, yeah. Yeah, thankfully, I've only had positive encounters with Booker good, T. Good, good, so. good, good. But uh, yeah, so, well, so now instead of doing the five-time thing, you can just be like, get your shit, get the fuck out of here. That can be how you sign off on your podcast. That's how I fire a videographer. Uh, <laughs> actually, 
<laughs> Actually, I did that to a trainee once. <laughs> I did that to a wrestling trainee did, once. Did you do it in a Booker T voice, though? That's no, I didn't. No, I didn't. I tripped over somebody that was supposed to be pulling cord for me, and he just didn't know where to be. And I'm just like, just get the fuck out of here. He, like, we, we broke the cord and everything. And then, like, I guess he went up to the like somebody I knew that was training at the time, like a good friend of mine. And he's like, yeah, he went up to me and asked if he should leave the building. And I'm just like, oh, shit. <laughs> so <laughs> I think I may be responsible for somebody quitting wrestling. Uh, so eh, there's there's uh, too many people in wrestling. There's too many people in. Wrestling. I mean, if the, if if the people quit, it's whatever. If you quit because the cameraman yelled at you, you weren't gonna last when you ran into Booker T. Let's be honest about that. Like, yeah, definitely. Anyways, we're once again we've gone all night. Uh, indie Sorry indie mayhem that. all night long. Oh, it's 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 great conversation. Check them out. Thank you guys. We'll see you next time. And until then, support indie wrestling. Oh. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.